the question I usually ask at this stage is I ask, you know, what's the most challenging type of audience? And that's, you know, you are, you are already there because this is what everybody is thinking about at this stage. The most challenging type of audience that scientists report to me over and over is what I call a diverse technical audience. And by diverse, I mean diverse in terms of their background. So you may have some people in the room that know a lot about your subject, right? Some people that are really are specialists. Then you might have some people in the room that know very, very little. Maybe it's the business people in, in the room. Doesn't mean that they're not intelligent people. It just means they don't have that same background. So how do you satisfy both of those types of audiences in the same talk? That's pretty tough, right? And usually what people do is they make a trade-off. They say, well, I'm either going to talk to the, 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 the deep technical folks or you know, I'm going to go at a higher level and then I'm going to talk to you know, the people in business and marketing, for example. But when you do that, you are always leaving somebody out, and somebody is going to be unhappy or dissatisfied. So what to do right, in this situation? Because it really is a, it's a tough one. I can understand the frustration. And so because this is a, a situation you deal with a lot, I would like to give you one practical strategy that I think you can use the next time you are presented with a diverse audience, how to make everybody at least a little bit happy all right, when, you, when you do this. So this is the strategy I'd like to teach you, or the tool that I would like to teach you. What this tool centers around is the idea of common ground among the audience. So I'd like to first define what I mean by a point of common ground. A point of common ground I'll define as something that everybody in the room, regardless of background, understands. All right, so a point of common ground is something that everybody in the room is, is on board with. Everybody understands a point of common ground. Now, here's what I observe in lots of the presentations that I see. I see that presenters actually do a very good job in the introduction of establishing a point of common ground. People do a good job usually in introductions of saying things like why the study is important or the information is important. People do a, a good job at that. And that's a point of common ground, for example. Everybody can understand uh, you know, why something is, is important. And then what happens, though, in the presentation is that they do that in the beginning, and then they go into the, the dive, right? So this dive is the dive into the technical depths. Now, let's picture it this way. Picture your audience as, you know, if you looked at this line, that's the water line, all right? Everybody's swimming along. Points of common ground, everybody's swimming along just fine. Everybody's heads are above water. And then you take that dive. You go underwater. Now, what happens when you stay underwater too long? You drowned, right? And this is essentially what happens all right, to a good portion of your audience when you take this technical dive and you stay down too long. Because that's what happens. We're all with you in the intro and then zoom. And this is where we stay for the remainder of the presentation. So here's the trick and the tool. Return to points of common ground throughout the talk. Because here's what this does, is that this then allows you to, to walk that fine balance of providing that technical depth, because here's the thing, you cannot stay all the way at the top because you won't satisfy the, the specialists in the room. You have to take some of those dives. But the trick is, don't hold your audience underwater. All right, tech, you can think of technical people, they're wearing scuba gear. They'd be thrilled to stay down here all day long. All right, but that's not going to work for everybody else. So because of that, we need to think about coming up for air throughout the presentation. And so one thing I'd like you to notice, because it's actually an important distinction on the visual that you're seeing here, is I'd like you to notice how the interval is shorter at the beginning. If you thought of this as a timeline of the talk, the interval is shorter here than it is as you go through. And that's on, that's on purpose, because I think that you need to return to these points of common ground a bit more often in the beginning. And here's why. It's all about establishing that relationship of trust, especially with the non-technical people in the room. Because non-technical people often come to a scientific talk expecting to not get much from it. They come expecting to not understand much. And you have an awesome opportunity to show them that that's not going to be the case. And I believe you have to make that case early. So if you return a bit more often at the beginning to points of common ground, what you're doing is you're reaching out to those people and you're giving them things that they understand and appreciate. And so a question you might have is, well, you know, how does this actually work in practicality? I mean, what would this sound like in a presentation? 
So an example or a way that you could think about this is you might put up, let's say, a results graph. All right, so you might put up a results graph, uh, and you might then take a dive where you go into some of the, some of the points, some of the findings uh, on, that, on that graph. And after you've gone into some of those more detailed points, you might say something like, so what all of this means is, or the reason this is important to the bigger picture is. That's what a point of common ground sounds like. I think a great way to think about this in terms of being strategic is think about really planning out points of common ground. This does not happen by accident. This is something that I believe you should strategize ahead of time. And I encourage people to look at, look at a slide, anytime you have a slide that you think has some, some, some pretty deep technical knowledge on it. Again, a results graph is a great example. You have a key, some key results that you're showing. Always summarize that with a point of common ground. And as long as you do this reliably throughout the presentation, you can walk that fine balance of helping both the non-technical and the technical people to stay with you. So I think this is a great tool, but again, my, my word of advice to you is that you need to use this strategically and plan it out. This isn't something that happens on the fly. I would, I would encourage you to go through and actually almost map your presentation like this. Ask yourself, all right, here on slide five, this is where I'm going to come up to a point of common ground. And I'm going to take another dive on slide six, and I'm going to make sure at the end that I come back up to a point of common ground. So start to think about that as you go through your presentation. And this will help you to manage a diverse audience.